We're back with Rick Van Warner, the author of this new book, On Pills and Needles, The Relentless Fight to Save My Son from op Opioid Addiction. Now, Rick, this is an epidemic. Tell us about what you're seeing in the States. It's unbelievable. In fact, um, new stats just came out uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, that um, show that there's been a 30% uptick uh -huh. um, in, in the last two years in overdose deaths related to opioids. More than 100 Americans every single day are dying from this. Um, and, and it's more people died last year than, than Americans that were lost during the entire Vietnam War, which is a really staggering statistic when you think about it. Yet we see no one marching in the street on this issue. Mm. And it's a lot of that has to do with the stigma around, around the word heroin and mm. not, people not equating opioid, pill form opioid as synthetic heroin, which indeed it is. Mm. We, we're gonna uh, hear about Tommy now, or Tommy mm -hmm. now, but I wanna talk about the effects that this had on your marriage as you're you know, chasing your son and trying to find out where he is and, try, and sending him to rehab clinics and, and just trying to deal with this, this addiction your marriage with Mary was just in turmoil. Absolute chaos, absolute uh, agony. Um, every thought, you're, you, you try to not think about it all the time, but you do, you're waiting for that call in the middle of the night. My wife confessed to having planned his funeral many times lying awake at night. And you get to that point where we reached a state which I re refer to as hope neutral mm. because you don't want to ever give up hope and we certainly never gave up on him. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you reach a point of reality where you understand that that call could come at any time. It is a very tough way to live and it did take a toll on us. And it took a toll on you individually as people, not just your marriage. Absolutely. And, and you talk about in your book how a men's group was really impactful. Well, I have a few, a few, um, a few friends, a, a few Christian brothers and, and a small men's group, uh, Christian men's group that I did attend a lot during this period. Mm -hmm. And just being able to open up and share was very powerful and to be able to share in, in, and, and feel, feel God's spirit in the middle of that, yeah. that was very much sustaining because you start to question your faith. You start to wonder why is this happening to our family? We're a, a normal family. And unfortunately, this scourge is, is hitting every walk of life. It doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're uh, poor or, or middle class or wealthy or whether you're rural or suburban or urban, it's an equal opportunity destroyer. Mm. So how's Tommy today? Tommy's doing well today. Yeah. He's, he's come out the other side and that's one of the things I wanna, I wanna convey is that there is hope. You, you can never give up hope. You can never give up on your child. Um, we really embraced him in unconditional love and acceptance and started detox him at home, mm -hmm. rehabbing at home, you know, helping him through his recovery, not letting him you know, be isolated and be, be, uh, feel any rejection, which is such an underlying cause of people that use opioids and fall into opioid addiction is feelings of not fitting in, uh, isolation, uh, worthlessness, low self-esteem. So uh, it's very important to make sure that you don't let, you do everything you can. Ultimately, it's up to them. Only they can choose to change. But as families, we can embrace them in our love and, and unconditional acceptance and not sweat the small stuff. And you say that you found out that Tommy had never found his tribe. He had never found a group that Correct. he could really connect with. And he also really desired to just hang out with you and be loved by yes. you, Rick. Yes, and, and the father-son bond is so incredible. Yeah. People, baby boomers, I'm a, I'm a baby boomer, and people of our generation, you know, men were supposed to be tough and, and not cry and not hug their sons. Mm -hmm. I mean, ridiculous notions such as this. I think that it's, the, there's, a huge power in in his and my relationship getting to the point of open communication and just that that unconditional love and acceptance that really made a huge difference in him as well. Yeah, and any advice, uh, you did speak of some advice that we can give to parents, any other advice also to people who are watching that might be going through an addiction? Certainly, uh, probably the biggest thing is don't try to go it alone. Don't worry about the stigma that might be associated with this or you can't tell your friends or your neighbors, 
go to a support group such as Naranon, do things that really make a difference to, to share what's going on. Also, don't sweat the small stuff. It, in, in our case, you know, it was horrifying at first that we had a child with a tattoo. Now, who cares yeah. He's, if, what kind of t-shirt they wear or how they decide they want to wear their hair. I mean, it's, it's, they're alive and, and embracing their, their differences and never giving up hope, mm. never giving up hope, but don't go it alone. Uh, there's support in, in others. And the name of the book is On Pills and Needles, The Relentless Fight to Save My Son from Opioid Addiction. Thanks again, Rick. Thanks for having me. And I hope what Rick said to you or said to us really resonates. You know, um, the desire that Tommy had to connect with his earthly father was so important. But I want you to remember that your heavenly father and that connection is also so important. And maybe you didn't have a great earthly father. Maybe you had a strange relationship with him. Please know that your heavenly father know, knows you and loves you so deeply. And if you are going through a struggle with addiction, our prayer partner Partners would love to pray with you. They are not trained counselors, but they can direct you to some trained counselors. As well as if you are a family member of someone who is struggling through addiction, please do call the number at the bottom of your screen. Again, our prayer partners would love to pray with you and agree with you that God can heal your loved one. Stay with us. We'll be right back.